And it's just a lot crammed into not a lot of space, really, is kind of how it feels like you're racing in a parking lot or something. You know, it's just not, uh, this, it's just tight and uh, it's hard to find a rhythm and it's um, definitely unique. But we have been coming here for a few years now, so that there is a little bit of normalcy, I guess, in, in the track and the course and, and everything. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a challenge and, and it's one of those places that, you know, again, I think road racing is extremely important to find a rhythm in. and. It's a hard place to do that. Matt Weaver, Sports Knot. Um, recognizing that you tend not to interject your opinions into kind of somewhat, I guess, controversial matters, uh, the decision to have another wild card round next year in the playoffs, having Watkins Glen in Atlanta, uh, Denny said that we're testing drivers' luck, not their skills. Do you feel one way or the other about that decision? Yeah, I mean, I think he's pretty spot on, really. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously I don't, they don't ask my opinion and I don't really want them to ask my opinion, you know, but I just, it's, it's, uh, I, I can certainly get behind what Denny said, you know, about that because it does put, put you in a tough spot and there's just so much out of your control when you go to those speedway races and uh you, you can put the perfect day together and you know end up end up crashed or whatever it may be so um i mean Watkins Glen to me isn't as much of a uh wild card race but certainly adding another speedway race i mean that talladega round has always been the round we're in right now has always been kind of the craziest round and the most unpredictable round just because you don't know i mean you don't know what's going to happen any week but certainly that one is is a bigger question mark than others so yeah I don't necessarily love that uh, personally, but you know, again, it's not my decision, and we're all going to have to deal with it, you know, when it when it comes time. So it kind of it kind of just it's kind of just there. It is at this point. And then um, kind of an oddball question, but next week is the Winchester 400, a race that you've won and competed in. For race fans or just industry people who have never been to Winchester and seen how grueling and tough that that place is, why is it so uh, unique and, and hard? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't been up there in, in quite a while, but uh, my first trip up there, I think I was like 14 or 13, you know, that was, uh, that, that was a lot <laughs> for me to, to go up there. Just, a, you know, a high banked half mile track, you know, a, a similar to a Bristol, I guess, in, in a lot of ways, um, but obviously aged, you know, and, and asphalt, not concrete. So it's, a, it's just a tough track and a place that, uh, can be intimidating, you know, when you're when you're young like that and you haven't seen a lot of a lot of tracks of, of that nature. And um, so, yeah, it was it was a lot for me to take on at that point in time. But I'm glad I did it, and I'm glad I went up there. I think I learned a lot uh, racing at Winchester, and um, always admired the event. You know, we had a few good runs up there, and would love to go back and maybe do it again someday. So, uh, looking forward to keeping up with you know keeping up with the race next week and uh, and see who gets a uh, uh, gets it done. Yep. All right. Let's come here to the front, and then we'll come back. Okay. Uh, Greg Engel, Forbes. Um, you've obviously talked about the fact you're not in the playoffs this year, but you are in the playoffs because you're going for the owners' championship. Is there is that the same? Is it the same kind of pressure in that position for you personally as it would be if you were going for the driving championship? And if so, does that give you kind of an advantage, so to speak, that you you understand how to deal with it and overcome that? Um, yeah, I, mean, I don't necessarily know that it gives you an advantage by any, you know, but, um, but, and, and I've said this multiple times throughout the, you know, course of however many weeks we've been, you know, four or five weeks we've been going at it, but I, I really don't feel any different, you know, like my, my approach each week has been just like it would have been if I was a part of the show, you know, personally, uh, from a driver's standpoint. So it's just really not any different. Um, and, and there is a lot on the line, you know, on, on the owner's side to the teams, it's a big it's a really big deal um, and you know thankful that between uh, you know Josh and Jordan and Corey uh, and, and myself we were able to get you know get the car in uh, you know in, in the owner's side and, and like I said that's a meaningful thing so um, I've been just as motivated uh, for that as I would have been if I had made the driver's side and uh, we've enjoyed you know enjoyed the challenge of the first few weeks and, and hope that we can continue to uh, to advance through the rounds um, you know it's a good opportunity and 
you know, there's still a lot of racing left this year, and we'd like to continue to improve like we have been and um, kind of get, get back up in the mix. Okay, let's go here. Uh, Stephen Stump, frontchurch.com. Chase, you're going for the, your first win of the season, but also trying to make it to the owner's round of eight. Um, also, in comparison to the last road courses, we have the Sage Cautions back again. Uh, what were your thoughts on NASCAR adding them again for this race? And is there a way to you know, both balance getting enough stage points while not completely sacrificing track position by the very end? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I wasn't surprised uh, to see him come back. You know, we saw those races go caution free and that's not, you know, that, that's not going to fly. So, um, you know, that, that's just, that's just part of, part of the deal. So wh whether it's TV or, or NASCAR, you know, I, you know, whatever it may be, we weren't filling the quota. So that something's got to change. And, and I think that was the easiest way to, to kind of fix it. Um, which, you know, to be honest, I would rather do the stage cautions than, I had them throw some random cautions. So I, I think that's better, and I think that's a more fair way to go about it. Um, so that being said, I think it's fine. You know, the the <clears throat> this time of year, getting those stage points is such a crucial thing for, for the guys in the points. It, it really makes the, that decision extremely tough. Um, and it can make or break your day, right? You know, if you, if you have a shot to win the event, there's no way you're going to be able to take the points, certainly not in the second stage, probably not in the first stage in this car. Um, so yeah, if you, if you ha think you have a shot to win and you, you, know, you short those stages and you give up all your stage points and then you have a late race caution and a restart doesn't go your way and the race, you lose the race and now you got no stage points and you didn't get the win, then you can be in, in big trouble. So it just makes for tough decisions on the box. Um, but I don't see how, a lot, you know, unless you're in a must-win situation, I, you know, the guys that, that need the points, I don't see how you can give them up. Um, and, and I think that, uh, you know, last year even we saw guys that shorted stages that were up towards the front still get some stage points just because track position is so crucial. Everyone feels like they have to do it. Um, so we'll, we'll see. You know, it's always a big question mark. And fortunately, I don't have to make that, I don't have to make that call. Thank you. Yep. I apologize, folks. We're only going to have time for two more. We're going to go here, and then I'm going to come over to Jordan to finish. Davey Siegel with SiriusXM. Uh, Chase, earlier in the year, you spoke about how it was tough to find a rhythm with the injury and the suspension. You, you, you guys never were able to find that. I think you got six top tens in your last eight races. Do you guys feel like that rhythm that you were lacking earlier in the year has been found now, and that's kind of part of the reason why you guys are running a little bit better consistently? Yeah, I, you know, we've... Um I definitely feel like we've been better, and you know I think we've been working in the right directions. I think I've been pushing in the right directions, maybe just not quite as much as we need to. Um, but we've been putting together some good races, and we've been executing some good events, which is a good thing. Um, so yeah, I, I, I definitely feel like we've improved throughout throughout the year. Um, I, you know, looking back on it, I really don't think that you know. Being out and my injury really is a, is the reason for that. I, I think that my struggles, as I've learned more about my season and myself and 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 how kind of things have unfolded, I feel like my struggles and the things that I fought through this year, I was starting to fight through last year too. Um, so I really just think I I kind of picked up where I left off last season, and and I was going to have those things to work through regardless. So. Um, obviously, that was another bump in the road that I would have rather not <laughs> not gone through. But uh, yeah, it's just been you know we're just working through it and trying to stay in the fight, and uh, and we'll keep doing that each week and and try to make it happen. Okay, let's finish with Jordan. Jordan Bounke, the Athletic. Has there been a moment in your career where you've had a mistake, whether it's on you know on the track or a pit road or wherever, and you've you felt compelled to kind of put it on your shoulders to overcome it, to kind of pick you know to show the guys, hey, listen. It's on me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna fix this. Uh, yeah, there's been a lot of those. Um, yeah, I feel like I've made a lot of mistakes over the years. I mean, here this is a great example. I drove straight into the <laughs> straight into the wall there on you know on a restart, and um, God, I was so mad. You know, I just I felt like we had had a really good car, and we had a great shot at winning the race. And at that point in time, I thought I threw it away. You know, and. Uh, yeah, I I wanted to do all I could do to try to, you know, get back up through there and and you know make up for my mistake. But most of the time in this in this at this level of of racing, when you make a mistake, you don't have an opportunity to um, 
to make up for it. So um, I was fortunate that day to, to have enough time to be able to do something about it. But most of the time, you have to wait seven days, and that, that, that's tough. I think that's one of the toughest things about it is you ha usually have to wait a week. But, uh, yeah, you always try to make up you know, for any mistake you make. Have you ever given, like, your team a pep talk or anything? Or, like, not, like, not a pep talk, but have you said to them, hey, boys, you know, I screwed up here, but I got this, you know, whether it's this race or a week from now or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, I'm sure there has been instances where, where that's happened, but I, I feel like the best way to do that is just to go and, and show them, hey, you know, I'm, I'm giving you 100 percent and I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to make up for my mistake or I'm just to where they know that you're doing your part. I mean, that, that's the most important thing. If, if they know I'm, I'm out there giving it my all, then to me, that's all you can ask for, because that's all I ask for out of them, you know, and we're all going, we're all going to mess up and, um, you know, you just try to try to be accountable for, for that when it does happen. And, and I feel like that, uh, that our team does that, you know, if I make a mistake, I try to own it. And if, if they make a mistake, uh, I feel like they do too. So, you know, it's, uh, that's just a part of competing and, and everybody doing their jobs and making sure we show up each week, you know, reset and ready to go and prepared for the next challenge.